Okay, welcome to Wake Up Course. Uh, this is lecture number two. In our previous lectures, we talked about what is a Wake application, and we said it's a data mining and machine learning application, normally used to solve again data mining problems and machine learning. In this lecture, we will continue with the Wake Up course, and we will go through pre-processing the data. So as we said earlier, we start with the Explorer for Waker. We have four different tools for Waker. In these lectures, we are using the Explorer, which everything is graphical user interface. So our first task in data mining or machine learning is preparing our data, data preparation. Waker call this process filtering. So here we start with the pre-processing the data. That's the first step. Data can be imported from a file in various formats. We talk about the ARFF, which is very common for Waker. And also when you download and you install Waker in your computer, you have access to a lot of uh, data sets in ARFF formats, which we are going to use to do some of our assignments in this course. And also you can use it for your own practice. We also have the CSV files, which is the comma separated values, and C4.5 and binary files. And we, can, we have files from database system, which we need the Java database connectivity, because again, Weka is written in Java. So the pre-processing tools in Weka, again, is called the filters. And we can do a lot of filters uh, tasks Example will be the discretization. We talked about this in the theory in our course textbook. Discretization means we are converting our data to uh, ordinal level or in uh, interval level. So for example, if I have patients with different ages from zero age, a newborn baby, to 90 years old person, so many different ages. I can, again, have three different groups of ages, so I can break into any amount of group, three, four, any amount. Let's group it into three different forms. And we will say that the patients that their age start from zero to 30 is one. From 31 to 60 is two. 61 to 90 is three. Again, it can be any categories of grouping. And this con concept is called discretizing. Also, we'll go through what is normalization. Uh, one of the normalization and transformation, uh, same concept. Example, I have a data set, and one value is 100, another value is 1 million. Now, the difference between 100 and 1 million is so big that 100 will be ignored. But if we need this data, we can normalize or transform our data so that I can use the log, I'll take the log of the values. So log, log base 10, 100 will give me two. Log base 10, 1 million will give me six. So now six and two are very close. So both data will be considered. This is called again, transformation data. So resampling also, again, collecting different sample of data. Attribute selection, which means we have so many attributes, we want to remove the irrelevant one. For example, I'm trying to predict whether a patient have cancer, yes or no, or positive test or negative test. In this case, I don't need a patient's last name because last name is irrelevant to testing. Maybe I may need the address because it depends on the location and the environment that you grew up or you live, maybe it can have effect on your health issues. So attribute selection and also combining attributes. For example, I have a date of birth and age. I can combine the two to one because both have a, almost the same meaning of data. So again, our first task will load a file to our, we start our waker load the file, do the pre-processing first. 
So that's the step here. Uh, first of all, we load our file. So when we load our file, we will see the attributes. So first we click on file to open. Then we open the file. The file name again is Aris. Aris relation means the file name Aris. The instances means the records you have. So we have 150 records and the attributes are five. So we can see the attributes are one, two, three, four, five. So we have sapel length, sapel width, sapel uh, patel length, patel width, and our class, which is the target variable, what we are going to. In this case, we are going to classify the flowers if they fall in three different categories. And we will discuss that later on. So again, the current relation that is open is Aris. It has 150 records, that's 150 rows. And you have five columns, the attributes, which is named here. Now, if I click any of the attributes and I look at the right side, I will get data by the, which we call this like mental data, data by data. So, for example, sapel length is selected. We know sapel length, the minimum value is 4.3, the maximum value is 7.9. We also were able to find the mean and standard deviation. This is quantitative data numbers. Now we have distinct 35 different values. There's no any missing value for the sapper length. And also the, num the data type is numeric. Uh, the unique is nice, which is six percent. Then we have a visualization here. This tells us the same attributes, sapper length. It tells us the three categories of values and quantities. So we click on the class label. When we click on the class label, you see this is our class that we want to predict the label. We want to predict whether whether the based on the sapper length, sapper width, patel length, and patel width of a flower. We will know if the flower is Aris setosa or Aris vesicola or Aris virginica. So that's our class level. This is what we want to classify our data. So we can click on the visualize all, and that will give us again five categories of the data visualization. Then we click on Patel length you can see that we have this a quantitative data actually all the for this is this is length and width so they are all quantitative data so now we will start our fit level we understand our data how many attributes we have the class level so we click on choose waker filters so the filters can be either supervised or unsupervised. For some reason here, we are seeing only unsupervised. Unsupervised, we have two, either attribute selections or instance. So we click on attribute, and now these are all the tools that is available. So this is all the tools that is available for attributes. So we can do discretize. Actually, that's what we select. Or we can normalize, and we'll go through some of these uh, tasks. So for now, we did a discretize. Now, before I click on discretize, I'll make sure, let's go back once. We make sure that our attribute is selected. So the attribute we want to discretize is the pattern length. So we select pattern length. Then we click attribute, then we discretize. So when I look at the text box, I will see that, okay, we have our data and discretize the pattern length. And the method that we use. So from here, we can click on the name if we want to change the attributes here. So criticize, uh, discretize we have 10 beans 10 beans means 10 different groups 
categories. So if the age, I have only three categories, then I'm going to enter 20. So we can also have the option for attribute to find the number of bins, invert selection, make binary, use equal frequency. For now, we're going to have the use equal, equal frequency as false. We change it to true because we want to use the equal frequency of the data. Then we click OK. So we're done with our pre-processing. So we click Apply to change. And we can see a little bit change here. You can see the pattern with now we have intervals. They gave us 10 distinct, so 10 different categories. From negative infinity to 1.45, between 1.45 1 to 1.55, 1 1.55 to 1.8, etc. So we finish with the exploring, explorer for again data pre processing. Here yeah, we did only discretize. Yeah, we want to show the steps. So first step, pre-processing, which we call filtering. We did that finish. The next step, we are building the classifiers. We can also build clusters or associations. So classifiers in Weka are models for predicting nominal and also numeric quantities, which the theory also told us. Classify or classification of Garidin is good for predicting nominal Quantities such as yes, no, true, false, positive, negative, etc. So again, we are going to use the classifiers, and also we have regression. Regression means we are dealing with quantitative data, so we are trying to predict quantitative such as interval ratio values. So implemented learning scheme is including. For, classific for classifiers, we have the decision trees and list. We also have instance-based classifiers. Uh, we have support vector machine, multi-layer perceptron. This is the neural network in the most famous, one of the famous algorithms for even deep learning also with many layers. Then logistic regression for predicting quantitative data. Then we have bias let which is based on probability concepts. So these are the classifiers or classification of the reading we can use. Then we also have the mental classifiers. This is decision tree if I want to do bagging and boosting. Uh, we have uh, different types of computer application running at the same time. This is case decision tree, we can combine two trees together and make our boosting of that game. And also the concept of stacking, error correcting output code and logically weighted learning. So we want to start the classifier. So here we can see that we move from pre-process, we click on classify. We are using the same data, so we have our option already. Now here we need to choose the classifier we want. By default, we have a zero R. Zero R is there, is based on ruling rule algorithm. Now, when you are doing classification, we said in the theory that we have two data. One is training data to build a model. The next will be the test data to test it. So the data we selected and choose is we're going to use it to build a model. So we have two parts, the training set, which including the class. Then we have the test set, which to test the validation or the accuracy of the, of the system that we are building. Here we decided to do cross validation and the number of fold is 10. And we may discuss what is a cross, actually we discussed this in the theory lectures. So we click choose. 
and then we have to select let's see what option so here we select the j48 that's the algorithm let's go back so when i click on choose we can we can give me all the classifiers which is way a lot than what we have in the slides so we run it now first of all we have discretization Check every value is okay. The cast files, we click OK. Then the next step, we want to do percentage, percentage split instead of cross validation, number four. Percentage split means maybe one third for training, two third for testing, or two third for training the model, then one third for testing the model, how accurate it is. But we decided to use the percentage split. So 66% for training and 33% will be for the testing, the testing method. So we click more. So what we need in our output, we need the output model. We need the output per class stats. We need the output confusion matrix. We also stop prediction for visualization. So we click OK. Uh, we start it to run the classified. And this is our result. So we can see from the run information, the scheme name is decision trees or trees. In Weka, the decision tree name is J48. The relation we use is Aris, the instances is 150, the attribute is five. So when we have a weak assignment, this is the most important part. You need to explain your output. So here we say the attributes are five. And we have to we split 66% for train and the remainder for testing. So we can also do what we call the JPROM. And this time to build a model, it take 0.24 seconds. We have a cor correctly classified instances, 49. Incorrectly classified instances, two. And we have the Kappa statistic, which is 0.94. Then the mean absolute error, which is 0 0.0396, etc. So this is more or less statistics measurement, capacity statistic, mean absolute error, which is very common. Then data of the accuracy by class. So we have true positive rate, false positive rate. And we can see that our result is 0 0.063 and 0 0.8824. For again, true and TB means true positive rate, and FP means false positive. So when we start it and we finish, we have our result list here. So far, we have only one decision tree. Uh, which is called trees dot four point eight. So we click on it, and we say we want to visualize the tree. So this is the tree that the system generated for us. So here we want to click start, and we see the the graph. So here we can say we have two clusters, the green and the red area. But we can see that the red area is more congested to uh, join together and the green is a little bit spread. But again, we can find the pattern or the relationship between the data sets.
So next, we want to do neural network. In, in order to see neural network, you have to click on functions. Then look at the sub functions. We also have the support vector machine, simple linear regression, simple logistic. Uh, simple logistic is nonlinear regression. It's normal with the logistic regression. So when we finish, we click on start. And then we get our result. In neural network, we also get a network diagram. So here we have four attributes. And we have three connector. Go through the network. And this is our three output, Aris Setosa, Aris Vesicola, and Aris Vigemica. So we click on start. And this is our result now. So we can see the array Setosa 15. And all the rows, again, we have different letters to represent. So next is the naive bias, which is based on probability concept. And this is our result bias, naive bias. So here we want to visualize the threshold curve. And for now, again, this is what we have. So again, we can click on choose. To choose this one, Garidin, this time we are going to choose user classified and we start. And this is the three level of classification. And we can see again the form of the graph. And this is the three visualization, and this is our result. So in our assignment, you need to explain the major result instances here. And we click on the pattern length. And we again run it. And this is our result. So most important for the assignment, we need to show all the steps, all the steps. So again, we're going to end here and I wish everybody the best in this lecture. See again, we cover the concept of classifiers. In our next lectures, we're going to discuss about clustering data using the cluster. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.